Today on Next Generation Leaders, we're going to talk to Barbara Gassaway. Barbara is the President and CEO of Observation Baltimore, one of the country's premier market research firms. We'll talk to Barbara about leadership, developing that next generation of leaders, culture and innovation, and how she's positioning Observation Baltimore for success. Barbara, thanks for coming. We're going to talk a little bit about leadership, your leadership style, um, the things you do to groom and grow leadership. So, but first, I want to start off by talking a little bit about Observation Baltimore and what that is. Who do you serve? What do you guys do? Observation Baltimore represents the voice of Baltimore. Uh, that is, we give Baltimore residents, consumers, a platform to share their opinions about various products, services, ideas um, for uh, very large companies to government entities to anyone who has a pretty complex target audience, including um, Baltimore in the mix. So, uh, what we talk about on this program and this discussion piece is mostly around leadership, your leadership style, uh, the things you do to groom young leaders or people that you're adding to your leadership team. If I was to ask you sort of how you define leadership, do, do, do you sort of think like that or do you use that term or how would you define it? I, you know, leadership for me is a, is a fairly new um, thought process, if mm -hmm. you will, and I'm constantly um, seeking information on how to not only define my own leadership, but also to encourage and grow leaders within my organization. Yeah. So I think that the key ingredients of leadership as it stands today, and I'm sure this will change okay. uh, very, you know, with, with, with new information I get, but I really think self-awareness is a huge part of it. Mm. And I think self-awareness as a leader is important, but also imparting the ability for your leaders, your up and coming leaders to be self-aware. So through self-assessments, through various experiences, um, through speaking yeah. engagements yeah. And, and leading others. I think is um, a big part of it. So I think self-awareness is a big part of leadership. I also think learning this, you know, sort of constant hunger for new ways to grow people, uh, new experiences for both yourself and also your employees, and then also being present with your leaders, you know, in training, if you will. Since you come from a research observation world, you know, you talk about being reflective upon yourself. You, you know, you think about what you guys do, right? You observe people. We do. Um, and so I guess you're telling me as the, the good leaders reflective upon that process for themselves and for the people that work for them. I, I believe yeah. it is. I, like I believe that. it is. I think it's. I think it's. I think self awareness is huge okay. in in leadership, and I think that great leaders are very self aware of your strengths and weaknesses, and then that way. And when you're building an organization, being self aware is is critical because you need to fill in the gaps of the things that you're not, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and all all people aren't all things. So. I, I think self awareness in that aspect is important as well, but also allowing others to not be all things, you know, and to make them realize that uh, what their strengths are, what they can work on, and then other things that they need others to to bring up to the plate because they're not capable. It's just not in their repertoire skill. So you're sort of bringing us on to the next conversation around not just how you define leadership, but how you build a leadership team, right? So you, know, you might come with certain competencies and character attributes and skill sets, but probably there's others on your team that either complement you or um, uh, challenge you in some way. So how do you, what do you, how do you look to, to round out that team? How do you build a leadership team for Observation Baltimore? I think challenging me is one of the things that I seek in okay. a person right. who is going to work for me because I think I, I want to be challenged I, and I want to challenge them. So having me think differently is a really great, I think, attribute in, in a future leader. But in terms of, um, I think assessments have really helped me. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they're be all and end all, but I think that they're at the beginning of, we use CVI, mm -hmm. uh, we use DISC, uh, uh, used to be Myers-Briggs, now it's uh, Kiersey Temperament. We use all of those assessments to, one, provide a, a foundation of self-awareness for us, but also we actually we dictate the position and we identify what skills are necessary for those positions and then we fill those positions with like people. So you sort of benchmark it on sort of the, the behaviors that you're looking for and then when you bring people into that spot, they're... Um 
either qualified or not? Is that through the assessment? Through the assessment, I got yes. You. Okay. Well, and, and not, not qualified, they're really, um, we think it's a better fit. So mm -hmm. if you, if you uh, buy into the philosophy, which we do, of the core values index, the Lynn Taylor assessment, yep. uh, um, it's really just how you're wired. It's not about, you know, it's not about, you know, you're right or wrong or, or indifferent. It's about how well your innate abilities fit this role. Yeah, yeah. You know, your industry continues to change like everybody's, right? Um, we are we are the innovation industry. And market research, if you're not if you're not innovating in market research, your competitor is so you won't be in business. So very you won't long. be in business very long. So how do you in, in, how do you make that part of the culture where where you're bringing on these leaders, they're part of your team, you, you're relying on them to be innovative, and it needs to sort of be part of your everyday culture things. How do you how do you do that? How do you keep them innovative? How do you challenge them? How do you know what, what's the next great idea? Where's it coming from? The next great idea is that it actually comes from all over the place. We have people in our call center who bring up these amazing ideas. So, and it's it is really it's ingrained in our culture, and yeah. it's part of our it's part of our staff meetings. It's part of our um, let's try this and see how it goes. You know, it's not just a matter of again, it's it's doing what you say, right? It's it's a matter of let's be innovative, but don't try that. It's not going to work. Okay. So it's a, it's be innovative, and here's how we can. Sort of in implement that within the parameters of we got to get the job done. Yeah, about business. Yeah. So, but people are allowed to try, and and I think too that making things their own, whether it's a leader or not. Um, interestingly, I attend a leadership workshop, which you know, um, every I'm part of a leadership group go to a peer advisory group once a month, and I have a coach. And my frontline person was, was reporting to me, and I was doing one-on-ones with her in the absence of this position that I, yeah. that I just recently filled, thank God. So she said to me, um, she said, I want a group like yours. And I, I said, oh, really? She said, yes. I said, well, what would your first, what would your first meeting topic be? Yeah, yeah. And she said, how to be the dumping ground. I said, go, Don yeah. approved. Yeah, yes, yeah, you yeah. can be the don't, you know, yes. And what was your next meeting? She had like five different topics. She needed to work, yeah. She's getting together mm -hmm. um, administrative assistant type people on a monthly basis in her offices. That's awesome. Isn't that awful? That's so, awesome. so as long as it's a um, fruitful and they're, they're proving to you that they're getting some, I said, go. Sounds pretty, like a pretty neat place to work. Um, Leaders uh, are going to have an impact on whether you guys grow or not, right? Um, are there things that you do around sort of the, you know, how you see your company growing? And then what's the role? You obviously play a key role in that because you're, you've been in this industry for a while and you're well known. Um, but then the people that work for you, whether that's, a, whether they're sort of a rank and file project leader or they have a business development kind of title role, how do these leaders fit into the sort of the growth of the company? What do you, is, what do you how do you incent? How do you encourage? What do you do around uh, them being a part of the company continuing to, to be viable? Well, there's, I mean, it really depends upon the position. Our business development position is actually commission. It's, it's you know, part salary, part commission. So okay. we do this. So we really structure every single position differently. Uh, if you're a key leader, key management person, and you're, you're profit sharing. Uh, but also I do believe that bec you set a stage for the culture and um, if you listen to the most recent philosophy, it's not all about the compensation. It is about that I feel that my contributions are valued, that I'm making a difference. So we make sure that we incorporate that as well. So it's not just compensation. Okay. It is also about people leading a charge, um, that, they're, that they're valued, that, they are, um, that they're growing. Does the, does the accountability piece, does it connect to the, uh, to the customer stakeholder or the partner too? I mean, do they sort of know there's an expectation there as well? The customer? Yeah, so as you relate to sort of what's expected uh, of, the, of the team? I don't necessarily know whether the customer would realize that we have team expectations. Mm -hmm. I would say if you interview our customer, they would also gush about the experience. Yeah. And they would also say, boy, you know, we, I mean, we have one researcher who's bringing three projects in just this week. And she's not from Baltimore, <laughs> so she's like, you know, she's she's staying here all week because she loves it so much. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I, um, 
I have a new term now. It's sort of a, a, I used to say raving fans, but now it's a, they're going to gush about the experience of working <laughs> with you. That's terrific. So um, I think we covered what we wanted to cover. Um, I want to thank you for the time you spent. And, oh, sure. And it was get, good to get to talk about Observation Baltimore and the cool things you're doing. Um, sounds like you're on top of things from a leadership standpoint, from an innovation standpoint. I hope so. You know, um, it's, we're a work in progress. It, aren't we all? You know? but it sounds like your progress is going pretty well. So thanks, Barbara. Thank you very much. Barbara Gathaway has a perspective on self-awareness. She feels that that's one of the most important attributes of any leader, being self-aware, aware of their team, aware of themselves, aware of how they build a great leadership team. Barbara also feels it's very important to use a series of tools in order to find out who that right person is to fill that leadership role. Give them a chance, give them a chance to succeed, and continue to always work on their leadership skills. We think Barbara is the right person to make Observation Baltimore a success.